Hello everyone, you are in Endurance Laser Lab. In this video I would like to tell you a little bit more about diode lasers. So we are going to speak about lasers and drivers, cooling system. So we are going to start with exploring the laser diode. So this is a tube, brass tube or could be copper tube, uh, where the small diode is inserted inside. So this is Nichia diodes we are using. We have a bunch of uh, burnt diodes, so you can see how they look like, for example, like this. So, pretty small one. Uh, it called, uh, it is in shape T-05 uh, or 09, so different variants. So this is actually 7 watt uh, laser diode that is installed into this, into this tube. So this tube is required to to keep diode straight and this tube is also helping to distribute heat. So when we install it into a bigger one, into a big amount, so now you can distribute heat from here and here. Then this uh, laser diode is installed into a heat sink. So we install it like this and we use special thermal paste just to make sure that the heat will be distributed pretty well. So, and also in our new upgraded versions we add additional heat sink. Uh, let me find it. Right here. Yes, there's our secondary heat sink that is installed like this. We need to press pressurize it. So then these two heat sinks will remove heat from the laser diode. We also use different fans, so uh, I'm going to show you two different fans. We have uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.07 amps and 0 0.22 amps, so this is more powerful and you see it, it is a bit thicker, so this is like 15 millimeters, this one is 10 millimeters, so this is a bit better fan. Um, when we install it at the back part of our aluminum housing. Another thing that I'm going to tell you is about different variations of DC-DC converters. So to run the laser you actually need a laser driver so you can use uh, DC-DC converters like this. We also have another one, red one. So uh, it has potentiometers for changing voltage, maximum voltage and maximum current. So the thing is that the laser diode needs stable voltage and stable current. So different variations, you set up voltage, for example for 10 watt laser we set up uh, in the range from 4.4 volts up to 4.67, sometimes even 4.9. Very rarely we do it with uh, 5 volts. And then we also add uh, a Zener diode to the output. So this is in, this is out. We add Zener diode here uh, to protect the laser diode from unexpected voltage jump. Very rarely it happens, but uh, just in case you want to make sure, you can do this. So for example, this DC-DC converter, it has no uh, current stabilizer, so you cannot actually uh, change or set up proper um, current, so the current will fluctuate and that's, this can actually harm your laser diode. To control the laser diode, we use Endurance MO board. This is uh, like a smallest version. So you have wires, connection wires to control the uh, laser. And we have pins for incoming power and um, the jack that goes to the laser, like this. And incoming voltage and pins to control the board. So these pins are used as TTL wires for your 
power management system. Also, I'm going to tell you a little bit about lenses. So this is a smaller three element lens. We also show and uh, ship with um, G2 lens. So the thing is that this focal, uh, this lens can be focused in the range from 2 centimeters to um, 10 centimeters. G2 lens can be focused in the range from 2 millimeters to 10 millimeters. Another thing very important to have compatible mounts that you can actually mount your laser like this. For example, we have at mounting positions, you can screw the mount over here, right? Or like this. And hang your laser to your 3D printer or CNC router. Before shipment, we do measurements with this thing. Uh, it's not absolute uh, system for measuring laser power. It's relative um, device for for checking relative uh, power that is created by heat. For example, if I touch with my finger, it'll also change the position, uh, the numbers. So it means that I generate heat. <laughs> so and this heat can be calculated on this device. So it helps us to find out if the laser is working um, in, a, in a good position or not. So if we need to adjust or change something. So every time we ship we do two testings like this. So what actually you can do with uh, different lasers. For example the best result we, we had when we cut um, acrylic, 8 millimeter acrylic with only three passes. So you can also make photos, photo images like this. So uh, that's pretty much it I wanted to tell you uh, about the lasers. So uh, let me tell you a little bit more about uh, focusing and some additional processes. So what we have when we want to focus the laser. So, for example, we have a laser diode and we have it like this. So, when we add lens, for example, we use three element lens. Let's like this. So, this is three element lens. So, it means that the light will go like this. So when you see and when you think that you'll get the focus, it's, it does not necessarily mean that you'll have a spot. It will be the smallest uh, range for these um, for these beams that go from a left and right. So it will it will look like spot, but actually it is the smallest. Uh, shortest range between two uh, lines, two beam lines that go from from the different uh, from the different positions. So when the lasers actually emit light, it goes like this. So it means that uh, this is divergence. So we have horizontal divergence. It is something like thirty uh, degrees and we have a uh, vertical that is probably like 5, 8 degrees uh, so um, it's cool. that's why when you have a uh, focused image it looks like a rectangle so the best focus you can get is a rectangle so it's exactly what uh, you have as an emitting uh, as an emitting uh, material. So it looks like this. That's why when we use a lens it appears to be a rectangle as well. So another thing that I wanted to tell you is about uh, controlling the laser. So we use commands in G-code. So probably most of you already heard about it. Oops, sorry. G 
G-code commands. So to run the laser with a G-code is quite easy. So probably you'll run the same G-code you run on your 3D printer. So for example to turn on and off the laser you use M03 command to turn on and M05 to turn off. But um, you can actually check your manual if these commands are correct. Sometimes it's M105, uh, 107, so you need to check it out on your 3D printer or CNC machine. So the G codes that we're using, they're quite, quite universal, so you don't need to deal with that. Uh, another thing that I'm going to tell you is about uh, temperature. So when you run the laser, uh, the limit temperature for the laser diode is probably around 70 Celsius. So in Fahrenheit that would be roughly uh, 200, maybe 220 Fahrenheit. So this is a maximum temperature the laser diode should work. We actually recommend not to, to exceed 60 Celsius. So it means that the diode will work uh, in the maximum power and without losing its power when you run it continuously. So it's very important to, to keep this temperature lower. That is why we ship um, temperature sensors if you want them or you can buy them or you have it in a, uh, in a laser box. So the good thing that with this temperature sensor you can always control uh, your laser temperature. So what happens when the uh, temperature increases? So when the temperature increases your laser diode consumes more power. So most of you might probably think, wow my laser is consuming 5 volts and 8 amps. So this is good. Well, I would say that this is too much. So an average power consumption for our 10 watt laser probably would be in range 4.5 volts and something like 5, 6 amps. So this is something, uh, this is normal parameters that should be and the amperage should be pretty stable. So if you do measurements, so make sure that you have proper uh, amperage output otherwise uh, the laser consumes more more amperage so current increases uh, increases guess what the laser gets hotter so the temperature increases and uh, the laser will not actually uh, be lighter so it will not generate more light uh, more energy it consumes, more energy goes to temperature. So the light, light power, uh, light power will go down. So uh, it's quite non-linear process talking about diode lasers and how things are going on inside a laser diode. But so for example, very high. So we have roughly 40 watts here. So that probably too much here we have something closer to uh, 30 watts so it means that we have something like 8 10 watt optical power that is generated continuously and about 20 uh, 20 watts uh, go on heat so this is like uh, heat distribution heat generation so we need to remove it with our heat sinks so that's uh, pretty much it I wanted to tell you about uh, endurance lasers and just a little bit story short story about diode lasers so hope that you like this video please share it with your friends and if you have more questions do not hesitate to email me gf at endurance or text me plus seven nine one six two two five four three oh two uh, so you're very welcome to make comments under this video, share it with your friends and uh, yeah, hope that it brought you closer to a world of laser diodes. Thank you. Bye-bye.